Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I wanna talk about the Excel 2019 exam, and we're looking at the first subdomain called Manage Worksheets and Workbooks. Overall, this accommodates for 10 to 15% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can see what we're gonna be covering today. This is gonna be a two-part series. In this first video, we're gonna talk about import data into workbooks, navigate within workbooks, and format worksheets and workbooks. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel. In today's video, we're looking at the Excel 2019 exam, and we're looking at the first domain called Manage Worksheets and Workbooks. We're on the first subdomain called Import Data into Workbooks. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to import data from a text file. I currently have a blank workbook, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring that text file to populate this worksheet. To do this, what we wanna do is we wanna to go to the data tab. Now, by default, you're probably going to think insert, but for this, you actually wanna be on the data tab. We're in the get and transform data group. From here, we're gonna click on from text CSV. You'll want to map to where your files are located. On the certification exam, most likely the file will be located in your documents folder, but you want to feel comfortable navigating through this left-hand side, and specifically, you're probably going to look under this PC. So keep that in the back of your mind. But once you've mapped to your folder, you can go ahead and select your file. For this, I want to select this file right here, this text document, and I'm going to select import. That brings up this window. Excel has already gone through and determined that the best delimiter for this is gonna be tab. But if I didn't think it should be tab or the task question tells you something differently, you can easily switch through this by just clicking that drop down and clicking comma. But we can see that that's not really gonna work for this document. It doesn't look right. And if we do colon, same thing, it's gonna put it all in one column. So let's go back to tab, which is the correct delimiter for this file. And we're gonna click load. I want you to notice some things. The first thing is that it imported the data into a brand new worksheet tab. And that's because of the way that we brought this data in. And for the next point, I'm gonna show you a different way to do this. The other thing to notice is that my headers are here and it put in a brand new row for a header and just called it column one through column 11. It's not really what we wanted when we brought this data in. So let's go back to our sheet one and we're gonna go back to the data tab this subdomain also says that we should be able to import data from a CSV file. So let's look at doing that. We're back on the data tab. We're gonna click from text CSV and we're gonna select our CSV file. And if I open up this column, we can see comma separated values. The file that we're bringing in is the exact information that we brought in from the text file. So we're gonna go ahead and click import. Again, our delimiter is fine at comma this time I'm gonna select edit. And the first thing that I wanna fix is this row right here. I wanna make this my header row. And within this ribbon, we can click this in the transform group, use first row as headers. And if I click that, notice that that information was changed. You should be familiar with going through the ribbons found in the Power Query Editor. There's really a lot going on in these ribbons and you should be familiar with the different features that you have here. Now what I'm gonna do is instead of just clicking the close and load, I wanna click this drop down and select close and load to. And the reason for this is because now I'm gonna have control over where this information is brought into my workbook. We want this as a table, that's great. It's currently set to put into a new worksheet. That's not what we want. We wanna click existing worksheet. And then from here, it's gonna put it in A1 and that's because that's where my cursor was when we began this process. But if I wanted to change that, I can click this drop down and let's select A5. Before I click OK, you should note you can also add this data to the data model. We'll click OK. And notice this time that it was brought in just a little bit differently. We're looking at the second subdomain, navigate within workbooks. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to search for data within a workbook. We're on the home tab, we're in the editing group, and where we wanna click is find and select 
And in this drop down, we want to select on find. You can also use the keyboard shortcut control F to do this. In this window, you can look for a word or a phrase or a number simply by just typing in the find what. So if we were looking for the word unknown, there's really a lot going on in this document and it can be cumbersome to look for this word. We can use the find feature to do this for us. We'll go ahead and type in unknown and we can click find all. And we can see here that it found its first instance. Something you should note is that there's an options button here. Some things to note is we searched within this sheet, but if we wanted to search within this entire workbook, we could. We can search by rows or columns. We can look in formulas, values, or comments. Note this options because it can give you some advanced search features. You should also note that you can do more than just find. Within this, if I click replace, I can search for the word unknown, and I can actually replace this word and all of the instances of this word with text or nothing at all. For example, if I click replace with nothing typed in, notice that the text disappears. And if I click replace all, it tells me that it looked through this worksheet and it replaced four instances. We can click OK. You can also access the replace by using the keyboard shortcut Control H on your keyboard. Let's go ahead and close out of this window. The next thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to navigate to name cells, ranges, or workbook elements. So there are a few ways to do this. I typically run to the name box for something like this, which is this little section to the left of the formula bar. If I open this up in this area, I have a named cell, a named range, and I have two tables. Based upon what you see here, it could be difficult to figure out what is which. On the exam, if you have to navigate or use a name range, it's going to call out what that range is. So that will be a little bit easier. But if I click on Mercury, we really don't know what that is. And it happens to be just a named cell, whereas Neptune is an entire named range. A place that you could go if you wanted more clarity on what's named in this workbook is to go to the Formulas tab and in the Define Names, click on Name Manager. And here we can see our named items. And we can also see what it refers to. So this kind of gives us a little bit better insight into what is making these ranges. We'll click close because I want to show you one other thing. Let me click off my range. We're on the home tab. We're in the editing group. If I click the find and select drop down, we're told in this point that we should be able to navigate to workbook elements. And we've only looked for cells and ranges. But within this drop down, if I click on comments, it brings me to this cell. There's actually a comment in this cell and it was kind of hidden because the filter blocked it. You also have the ability to look for other things like formulas, but I also want to show you this go to. This brings up this window. To me, this window is not all that helpful, but if I click special, it opens up the go to special. You can also access that from the find and select drop down. There's a section called go to special and I can look for more in this worksheet. Now, if I click formulas and click OK, I get an error message saying no cells were found. But if I go to this other worksheet and do go to special and select formulas, notice it went ahead and selected this range. If you're told to find information and you can't find it or you're looking in a worksheet or workbook for information and you can't find it, you might be on the wrong sheet. Switch your worksheet tabs, change up your settings, and hopefully you'll be able to find it. The last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert or remove hyperlinks. I'm going to put my cursor in M1 and I'm going to type in website and we'll just use that text. From here, we're going to go to the insert tab. We're going to go to the links group and you can click on links. I'm a right clicker. I tend to right click on things. You can also click on link from here. Notice at the top that it says text to display and it took the text that was in that cell, and that's fine. Down below, we have the option of adding a web address. So we could type in nasa.gov. Some other things to note for this is you can add a screen tip. If you click this button here, you can actually add text to help the user identify where the link's going to take them. And before we click OK, I want to show you two other things because it's important that you know you can do this on the exam. You can place in this document. So instead of making it linked to a website, I could link it within this workbook. 
I have the option below of selecting a cell reference or define name. And I also have the option of saying where in that worksheet I want the cursor to land when this hyperlink is clicked. And then one other thing is the email address. Here you have the option of adding an email address that you want to link to. You can add a subject. But for this example, we just want to make it a website. So we're going to go back to existing file or web page. And with our URL typed in, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And that has been turned into a hyperlink. So when we click it, it will take us to the NASA web page. If I want to remove that, I can do that from the links button under the insert tab, or I can right click on this cell and click remove hyperlink. And that hyperlink is now gone. We're looking at the subdomain called format worksheets and workbooks. The first thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to modify page setup. To do that, we want to go to the page layout tab. And we're in the page setup group. Specifically for this, we're going to look at these three icons. And I'm going to show you another dialog box. Let's first look at margins. If I click this margins, you have some built in ones, but then you also have the ability to create a custom margin. So we'll click custom margins. That brings up this window. In this window, you have the ability to change the top, bottom, left, and right margins. But another place you have the ability to change is your header and footer. And then down below, you have the ability to center on page horizontally or vertically. We'll hit cancel on this. Let's look at page orientation. There's only two choices. You can have it portrait or landscape. And then you have the page size option. So if I click that drop down, you have a lot of the standard ones here. And you can also select more paper sizes. But let's go ahead and click on the page setup dialog launcher box. On this first tab, we have some of the same options that we saw above, but some things that we have that's different are things like scaling. And then we can also change things like our print quality. On the margins tab, it brings us back to that screen that we looked at before. And then you have the header and footer. Now, I wouldn't use this screen to make my header and footer by preference. I'm going to show you that in another section, but I did want to show you that this is here. And we'll go ahead and click cancel. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to adjust row height and column width. Let me go ahead and shrink this down for a second. Have you ever had a column with a bunch of pound signs in it? The reason for that is that your column is not wide enough to display the content. And there are a few quick fixes for that. If you want to use the auto fit, you can put your cursor between C and D and just double click. And it will actually auto fit the column to fit the widest cell in that column. You also have the ability to just click and drag that column so you can make it as wide as you want. Same thing with rows. If I wanted to click and drag row five down, I could. It's just clicking and dragging. Another thing that you can do is actually set up a specific column width or row height. If I right click on column B, I have the option to change the column width. That brings up this window and it allows me to key in a specific number. So let's go ahead and type in 15. And notice it went ahead and it put in that 15 amount. And I can do the same with rows. And then another place that you can go if you're looking to adjust some of these settings is if you go to the Home tab in your Cells group, if you click the Format drop down, you have a lot of these same features here. And then the last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to customize headers and footers. Now I showed you the one screen that you could play around with some of that, but my preference is to go to the insert tab and in the text group, click on header and footer. And that changes our view. It also puts us in the header. You should note that you have three sections for both the header and the footer. You have the left, center, and right. And if I click go to footer, it'll drop me down to the footer and I have the left, center, and right footer as well. Within those footers, we can do a few things. In the header and footer elements, we have the option of adding any one of these to those sections. So if I put the file name in the center, I could by just clicking that. Maybe I want to put my name in the left hand side. So I'll just go ahead and type in my name, Brendan, and notice it went ahead and put that text. So you can put the elements above or you can put in text. Other things to note, and it's often neglected, is over here on the left hand side of this ribbon, 
and we have this ribbon because we're in the header or footer, are these built-in header or footers. These built-in headers, if I click any one of these, it will set it up according to how this is. So let's go ahead and select one of these. And we can see above where it went ahead and it put in that style of header. Let me go ahead and click back in here so that I get that header and footer tools design tab. I want to show you this section here because we can select different first page. We can select different odd and even pages. We can scale with document and we can align with page margins. All of these features are going to be helpful to you if you need to apply a header or a footer on the exam.